Hello everybody, a warm welcome and warm it is, it's very pleasantly sunny just here late afternoon sunshine, Wednesday 5th of October. So what am I doing? Well, you know, just, just recently the other day I uh, was speaking to my person who delivers my gas and I said to him, I said, oh Dave, I said, uh, you wouldn't happen to know where there was any, there was any local clay uh, around these parts. And, um, and he said, well, he said, you go sort of like the other side of Williamsburg and you go up about four or five miles and then you turn right and then you come to this place and there's a fork in the road and you go down there to the right, he says, there's, there's an old uh, disused clay pit. Of course, my ears pricked up. <laughs> so, anyway, to cut a long story short, I went over there just um, last week and collected like a three quarters of a five gallon um, bucket of, of, this, of this clay. And it is, a, it is a real clay pit. It's an old clay pit. And they used to use the clay there in the make in makeup, in some kind of makeup. So, anyway, I I brought it back here the clay and managed to get it dry eventually. And um, of course, then I added it back to the water. And and that's where we're going to pick up the story right now. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod, and we'll take you on this little adventure. Well, we know you like adventures. Anyway, here, as you can see here at my feet, is this bucket of um, clay. Now, of course, it's, this has been in this bucket now for, well, over this last weekend, and I'll just bring a bit out for you. You can see it there. It's actually quite, it's reasonably clean, very rich color. And from there, after it had been on there, I put it through a, an 80 mesh sieve. And then I've, ha I've had it out over here actually on these, on these plaster bats, as you can see, they still got the color, the color of the clay here. So I've taken it off the bats now, and I've got I've got some of it over here on, on the wheel, and there it is. Um, that's ready to throw. I'm not going to throw all of it all at once because I want to make some tests. So I'm going to get the camera back on the tripod, and we're going to um, we're going to knead up some of this clay and see what we can do with it. Just gonna make a couple of pieces, and you can watch me. Um, put that there, just gonna actually wedge the clay. I haven't, I haven't wedged it yet, you see. So I'm just gonna take, it's actually a little bit on the soft side at the moment. This is rather soft actually. I've got another one over here which maybe could do with a little bit more a little bit more um, drying actually. Just to get it a bit more a bit stiffer. Have you ever tried kneading on your wheel head?
I'm finding it a bit sticky. It's exciting, isn't it, to be able to go out and find clay in nature. So much more rewarding than just buying clay from your local supplier. It's, you know, talk about plastic. <laughs> That's plastic clay, isn't it? You get it from the supplier. We need to go out and dig it in nature, don't we? Yeah, well this does actually need, this is really quite soft. Anyway, I'm just going to Just bring that camera in maybe a touch. We're still going now, I know the battery's a little bit. It's getting towards the end of its session. So. Ooh. Beautiful, creamy. Isn't that a great color? I tell you that it's so smooth. It's, it's throwing very nicely, but it's probably going to to buckle underneath because it's so soft. Just down at the bottom of the pot there. What I want to do is throw a number of, of small test pieces just to see how it just to see how it behaves, you know. I don't think I've thrown with clay as soft as this in my life. But it's very nice and soft and silky and smooth. And Anyway, my throwing stick. I was away this last weekend doing a workshop and I haven't I haven't got back into the the swing of things yet here in my own studio. Well I am Sort of, but
going to cut the top off because he's wavy. I wasn't trying to really throw anything of any consequence. I was just, was as much as anything, just to, you know, just a test to see what the clay is about. In actual fact, as I said, it, it is really too soft. Anyway, just wanted to show you that. Because I'm going to be, I, what, I, what I'm actually wanting to do is get a few pots made so I can, I can get them into the, into the bisque kiln, you know, and have a, and, and have a firing, fire them up to, up to bisque temperature to start with, and, um, so I'm going to cut off using my cutoff wire, and I get your cutoff wires the right length, just 12 inches folks is all you need, okay? And that's it. My my real my aim with all this is to really what I'm looking for is a clay that I can use that is going to be that is going to be refractory. What do I mean by refractory? I mean that it's going to be, I'm going to be able to take it up to stoneware temperature, up to high temperature. Um, and that the pot is going to be able to stand, keep standing, even at that temperature. Because you know what happens if you take a, like a terracotta or a, 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 low, a low fire clay, the clay itself actually melts and the pot just collapses. I've had pots in the kiln that I put in there and I thought they were stoneware or high temperature clay and then when I when I came to open the kiln the pot has completely disappeared it's just not there it's just a vacant space Look at that. a bug oh, hello bug just a vacant space and a, a ruined shelf <laughs> just a pool of molten clay and glaze and everything just running everywhere awful mess so so what I'm going to do is uh, just we'll just put this fella here I'll probably mash him up you know and this clay needs more drying anyhow just to demonstrate that as I wanted you to see it that it's really nice wouldn't it be great if we can get that to stay, that we, did, we find that it's refractory enough and it, it'll, it'll hold its own even up at cone 10. That's like 23,500. That would be really great. Okay, uh, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. I've got a workshop actually this weekend. Uh, I've got plenty of spaces, so if anybody wants to come along and join us, uh, I have to warn you though that this is a keep practicing zone. <laughs> As it says up here on my my paper, my my written up here it says caution you are now entering a keep practicing zone. <laughs> so it's a keep practicing workshop. But you know that's what we really need, isn't it? It's to get a grasp of the fundamentals. So many people I teach obviously have never never really been taught the fundamentals and it's really important uh, to get a grasp of the fundamentals because once you can throw you know you can make anything can't you and so many people are limited because they've never really been taught how to throw properly so join us for a workshop you'll enjoy it okay Simon Leach saying keep practicing see you soon bye bye